Now it's a great pleasure to, to introduce uh, Manuel Rivera, that is the, the first postdoc of the Miami Civil Staff collaboration. Uh, and uh, he's going to be speaking about categorical and algebraic models for path spaces. Well, thank you for the invitation. It's been fun, both mathematically and non-mathematically. It's been a good week. Okay, so first let me say a few words of what we do in this project and why we are interested in these constructions, okay? Why we do it. So we will use categorical techniques to obtain combinatorial models or, and algebraic models for path spaces. Okay, so by path spaces, I mean it in a broad sense. Path spaces might include some boundary conditions on the endpoints on the path, like for example, based loop spaces or free loop spaces and so on. Okay, and uh, our immediate purpose of, or what we have in mind are the following. So first, we're interested in extending certain results uh, related so, in extending certain results to connected, possibly non-simply connected spaces, okay? So, in the literature, there are certain um, statements relating, for example, the Kolbar construction, Hochschild complexes to spaces of paths, and many of these statements have uh, the hypothesis of simply connectedness, because they depend on certain um, spectral sequences arguments in which this hypothesis is required, okay? So we want to generalize these results for connected, possibly non-simply connected spaces. We are interested in obtaining small models for path spaces suitable for calculations. We are also interested in understanding the algebraic nature of spaces or the algebraic nature of spaces with more structures, like manifolds, for example. So what do I mean by the algebraic nature of spaces? Um, we're interested in statements of the form that relates the category of spaces to some algebraic category, right? For example, like E infinity coalgebras with some model structure is equivalent to spaces with some model structure. Statements like that. And the same for manifolds. When you have a manifold structure, you also have extra algebraic structure. Can we describe this manifold structure purely algebraically? Okay, so that's also a motivating question that we have in mind. String topology is about free loop spaces on manifolds, okay? Intersection type operations on manifolds. Once we have these models, we can recover these um, operations, maybe algebraically or combinatorially, and make explicit computations. We're also interested in obtaining uh, transparent and concrete algebraic and combinatorial formulations for the notions of infinity local systems, which, which are like DG modules over chains on the base loop space. So if we have an algebraic model for the base loop space, we can use this algebraic model instead and describe what it means to have an infinity local system in terms of algebra, and also describe more concretely uh, homotopic coherent nerve constructions. Another application that we have in mind is that once we have these algebraic models, it allows us to bring in tools from homotopy theory of algebraic structures and, for example, Kasul duality to all the above. Okay? Kasul duality is understood in the context of operads, of algebras, and we would like to apply it to, for example, string topology, or more topological problems, okay? And finally, um, we will also obtain models for um, higher categories suitable for different purposes. So this relates to what uh, Kaledin was talking uh, yesterday, okay? So this is what we do and this is what we have in mind, okay? Great. So, the main results and constructions in this project follow from understanding the relationship between three functors. Okay? 
The first functor is the path category. So given a topological space, I can associate a functorially a topological category. So a topological category is a small category in which the homsets are spaces and composition is a continuous map. So it's enriched over topological spaces. So what's the construction? So given a space, the objects of this category will be the points in the space. And the morphisms between two points will be the space of paths. Right? And composition is obtained by concatenating paths. So by a path, here I mean a parameter r together with a continuous map gamma from the interval of length r. So I include a parameter so that the composition is associative, strictly associative. If I fix a parameter, for example, if I always use one, I would have to reparameterize when I compose paths, and this would give me associativity only up to homotopy, right? In particular, note that if I look at the uh, home space between one point and itself, I get the space of base loops, right? So all loops based at the point B, okay? that clear? Given a space, I can associate a category in rich over topological spaces. So that's our first function that we will consider. And this is the example I'm going to be concentrating on, the base loop space, right? And moreover, this is a topological monoid, right? Because composition gives you a continuous product here, concatenation of loops, okay? That's the first uh, functor. The second functor that we are going to be studying is the Kolbar construction. So this is a purely algebraic construction which starts with a co-augmented differential graded co-associative co-algebra and produces an augmented differential graded associative algebra. Okay, so you start with a co-algebra and you produce an algebra. What do you mean? Uh, it's just a, fun, a, a strict functor between categories, yeah. Yeah, on the nose, yeah. So let me recall the construction of this, and of course this is modeling some base loop space construction, but I will explain ex explicitly the relationship soon. This is purely algebraic. So how does this go? So you start with a differential graded co-associative co-algebra with a co-augmentation epsilon. So what's a co-augmentation? It's just a graded map from the ground ring to C, and it's a map of co-algebras, where the ground ring has the obvious co-algebra structure, zero differential, and so on. Okay, that's a co-augmentation. So how do I, given such a thing, I want to produce a differential graded algebra? Okay, so that differential graded algebra denoted by bold omega of C, is going to have underlying module the free algebra on this C bar, okay? So non-commutative monomials, the free algebra. What's C bar? C bar is just killing this, the image of the co-augmentation. You mod out by that, so in other words, taking the co-kernel of the co-augmentation and shifting the grading by minus one. That's what this S to the minus one means. You just shift. Okay, Every, if something was in degree n, now it will be in degree n minus one. So you take the free algebra on that um, C bar, and then you define a differential here using the differential of C and the coproduct of C, right? So what's a, co a differential graded coalgebra? You have a coproduct, a map from C to C tensor C, and you have a, this coproduct is compatible with the differential of the underlying uh, chain complex, right? So you extend um, the following map, the following defined on a uh, monomial of length one, C. Uh, you take the sum of D and the coproduct with the sign here. You extend it as a derivation to the free algebra, right? You have monomials. If you define it on a monomial of length one, you can extend as a derivation by taking a sum and applying it to each term. Okay, 
And the augmentation is just a projection to this copy of k. This is an algebra because you can multiply monomials, you can concatenate them, and you can check that the co-associativity property of delta and the fact that d squared zero implies that this differential squared zero. Okay? So that's the Kobar construction. That's the second functor we'll be considering. Takes a co-algebra, produces an algebra functorially. Any questions? Clear? Great. So now we have a third functor that we're going to be relating to these previous two. This third functor is the rigidification functor of Lurie also introduced by Joyal. So let me quickly go back. Remember the first functor produced a topological category from a topological space? Now I'm going to be working at the level of simplicial sets. So I'm going to replace top by the category of simplicial sets, which is a combinatorial model for this model category of spaces, right? And then I'm going to do a combinatorial version of this path category functor. Okay, so let's go back. This, it's called the rigidification functor. It's described in the first chapters of uh, higher topos theory. So let's set delta be the category of simplicial sets. Simplicial sets are just pre-sheaves over the uh, ordin uh, ordinal category. And by cat set delta, I'm going to denote the category of small categories enriched over simplicial sets. So these are categories in which the HOM sets have the structure of a simplicial set. And composition is a map of simplicial sets. Okay? So what's the construction here? Okay. So it's purely combinatorial. No topology. So we first define it on a standard simplex. And then we will glue these together. Okay? So on a standard simplex, the objects of your category will be given by the vertices of the simplex. Okay? Those are the objects. And now between two vertices, I'm going to put as a hump space the nerve of certain category. Right? So given a category, you can associate a simplicial set by taking the nerve, right? By taking composable strings of morphisms. So what's this category? Pij. So Pij is a category whose objects are subsets of the set from i to j, and each subset um, we require it to contain the first and last vertices. And then morphisms are inclusions. Okay? And you can note that this category is actually um, a Cartesian product of copies of the category 1, where 1 is the category with two objects and a single non-identity morphism. So the picture for these categories look cubical, right? Look like cubes, okay? And then I can take the nerve of that and I will obtain a simplicial cube. So Cartesian products of delta 1 after I take the nerve, okay? And that's what I put in the, in the home spaces between i and j, this simplicial set, okay? It's a, it's a subdivided cube. That's how we think about it. And then, how do we define C on a general simplicial set S? We glue these together. We extend as a co-limit, right? And this is a co-limit in simplicial categories. So you have to make sure these exist and so on. But yeah. This is the construction of the third functor that we're going to be relating to the previous two. Okay, so we have the topological version of this C called P, and then this algebraic Kovar construction. And from understanding the relationship between these three functors, we will obtain some nice results of the kind I was talking in, in my first slide. Okay? Okay, so let's start by discussing the relationship between the first two, between paths and Kovar. Okay? So this uh, date, dates back to Adams. So let um, S of X at B, B the Alexander Whitney DG coalgebra of normalized singular chains with vertices at B. So what does this mean? Um, our, my simplices here, my generators, are singular simplices that map the vertices of your simplex 
to the fixed vertex B. Okay? So if X is connected, this will calculate the right homology you can show. Okay? So, and you have the delta, uh, the coproduct is the Alexander Whitney diagonal map. Okay? And let, uh, by C instead of S, I will denote the singular cubical chains on the base loop space. Normalize, of course. They have to calculate the right homology. Okay, so what's the statement? It was proven by Adams in the 50s that there exists a map of differential graded algebras from the Cobar construction of this differential graded coalgebra to the cubical chains on the base loop space. This is always a chain map. And in particular, it's a quasi-isomorphism if the space is simply connected. So in this, th this statement, in some sense, it relates Cobar to the path category functor, right? Because this is obtained by taking chains on the base loop space, and the base loop space is some, the monoid obtained by taking hum of this path category associated to x from b to b. This is a first relationship. So what if the space is not simply connected? So where was the simply connectedness assumption used in the proof of this statement? It was used in the application of the comparison, Zeeman comparison theorem of spectral sequences, okay? Which has certain hypotheses, and these hypotheses are met when the space is simply connected. Okay, but that doesn't mean that the statement is not true for connected spaces. It was condition to apply a theorem, right? In fact, we proved that this map is still a quasi-isomorphism for connected spaces, but we do not use spectral sequences. However, we have to be a bit careful here. Why? Because when we start considering non-simply connected coalgebras, coalgebras that might have something at um, level one, this Cobar functor is not invariant under quasi-isomorphisms of coalgebras, okay? So it matters what coalgebra model for the space we plug into this machinery, right? Or that we have to use a finer notion of weak equivalence, okay? So what we show is that if you take the chains on a con-complex model for the space, in other words, if you have inverse, inverses up to homotopy for the one simplices, then this model calculates the right homology, the homology of the base loop space in the connected, possibly non-simply connected space, uh, case. Okay? So we have to be a bit careful. The argument, the, the statement is true for connected spaces, but wait, if I take, for example, simplicial chains on a simplicial complex, it will not work. You need either to con replace or to do some kind of group, group completion thing in order to get the right homotopy type. Okay, so I will come back to this, how we extend this result. Okay, that's the relationship between the Colbar construction and the base loop space. Now let me explain the relationship between this rigidification functor and the path category functor. So this is in the first two or three chapters of Lurie, higher topos theory, what I'm going to say now. And it's basically saying this functor C is really modeling the path category functor. Okay, that's what I want to say mathema mathematically. Okay, that these constructions that I was doing in the home spaces commute with the singular change functor. The combinatorial construction commutes with the singular chains functor. So let me explain this more precisely. So if you take a space and you take the singular, the con-complex of singular chains on the space, then we have a weak equivalence of simplicial categories as follows. You first apply C to this simplicial set to obtain a simplicial category. That's weakly equivalent to just applying the singular complex functor to the, uh, to the home spaces of this path category. So sing of Px is a simplicial category obtained by applying this 
functor sing to the mapping spaces of the topological category px. So what's a weak equivalence of simplicial categories? It's a map of simplicial categories inducing a weak equivalence of simplicial sets in the hum spaces. Okay, so Lurie shows that this combinatorial construction is really modeling the path category construction. Okay, and there's a, a deeper statement behind this, that this functure C is part of an equiv a quilling equivalence of model categories. Okay. In particular, we have a weak equivalence of simplicial monoids, right? I can look at, the, at my hum spaces between one object and itself. On one side, I get a simplicial monoid, on the other one as well, and I get a weak equivalence of simplicial monoids. So I can, what is this saying? That this side is a combinatorial model for the base loop space, right? So I can take chains on both sides and I get a quasi-isomorphism of differential graded algebras. So apply normalized chains, which I'm going to denote by Q delta, takes a simplicial set, it outputs a chain complex, I do it in both sides, and normalized chains take out weak homotopy equivalences to quasi-isomorphisms, and I get a quasi-isomorphism of so differential graded algebras. So this, um, I was not using N before, but N means normalized, but I, before I defined S star just to be normalized chain, so that's kind of a typo, but this is just normalized singular chains on the base loop space. So taking chains on this simplicial set gives you a combinatorial model, uh, algebraic model for the base loop space. So how does this relate to Cobar, for example? Okay. So how are C and Cobar related? Right. So we want to get a statement of how the Cobar construction of these singular chain complexes is related to the chains applied to this simplicial set described by Lurie. How are they related? So in order to explain their relationship, it's useful to have a more concrete description of the mapping spaces of the rigidification functor. So the mapping spaces of the rigidification functor may be described in terms of necklaces. So what are these necklaces? So a necklace is a wedge of standard simplices in which this wedge means that the, ith, that the uh, last vertex of the ith simplex is identified with the first vertex of the i plus 1 simple, uh, standard simplex. So you should have pictures in, like this in mind, right? Standard simplices glued together like that, okay? And each standard simplex in the necklace is called the bead of your necklace, okay? So what's the relevance of these necklaces? It's the following. Uh, so let me say something before, that the category of necklaces form a category in which the morphisms are map, maps of simplicial sets that preserve the first and last vertices of your necklace. So they form a category. Um, I use some notation here that I think I will not use. So Dogger, Dan Dogger and David Spivak showed the following. Remember, given any simplicial set S, this construction of Lurie produces a simplicial category. So the hum sets are, is a simplicial set. So that's a simplicial set. And the statement is that this simplicial set can be described as a co-limit over the category of necklaces. So let me explain uh, some notation here. So NEC over X over S is the over category. So this means maps from a necklace to S. And this indices here mean that this map sends the first vertex of T to X, last vertex of T to Y. Okay, so it's necklaces inside your simplicial sets. Okay, so if I look at a necklace inside your simplicial set, then I plug in for each of these, I put in a copy of C applied to T, and I look at the simplicial set from the first vertex of T, that's what alpha T denotes, and the last vertex of T, and I glue these together, and that describes the simplicial set 
of the hum space between x and y, okay? And you can check that these, for what you're really doing is that for each necklace inside S, you're putting a copy of a simplicial cube, okay? So for some integer n t, okay? So for any necklace inside your simplicial set, you put this simplicial cube, you glue these together, and this is how you obtain a more concrete description of the simplicial set of Homs between x and y. Okay? Any questions up to here? Okay, so now that we have a description of the mapping spaces of the functor C, I want to relate to the Kolbar construction. Remember, it's starting to look like the Kolbar construction. In Kolbar construction, you had monomials of simplices. Now you have necklaces inside your simplicial set, okay? So in order to relate these two functors, we, the most convenient way is to introduce the notion of a necklical set. So that sounds a bit awkward, but it's just a pre sheave over the category of necklaces, okay? And necklical sets form a category in which, as usual, when we do this kind of constructions, morphisms are given by natural transformations of these functors. Okay? So my cells now are going to be given by necklaces. Okay? And I want to give a necklical set model for the base loop space. And when I take chains on this model, I'm going to get the Kobar construction. So we define a, a functor uh, gothic K that takes a simplicial set and now it outputs a necklical category, okay? And we will factor Lurie's functor C through this new functor K, okay? It will be more convenient to compare to Kolbar construction. So let's mimic the definition of Lurie, but using these necklical sets. So the objects of my necklical category is just the vertices of your simplicial set. And now what do I do in the hump sets? So for any necklace inside S from X to Y, I'm going to put a copy given by the neck, uh, a cell, sorry, given by the necklace T. So how do I do that? I just consider T as a necklical set by the Yoneda embedding, right? So any, ne any necklace T gives a necklical set. Just apply Yoneda, right? Take Homs into T. And I think of these as cells that I'm using to uh, describe the morphisms from X to Y. And the point is that these cells um, behave cubically. So associated to each T, I can functor I can, so to each T, I can functorally associate a cube, okay? And the chains on this um, necklical set given by gluing these cubes will correspond to the Kolbar construction. So let me say that more precisely. Um, oh, first, let me, uh, the statement that relates C and this K is the following. There's a functor T, which I call T because I'm thinking of this functor as a triangulation functor, that starts with a necklical set and produces a simplicial set, right? So again, necklaces can be thought of as parametrizing cubes, and cubes you can subdivide to obtain a simplicial set. So there's such a functor T, which induces a functor at the level of enriched categories by applying it hum wise and this C, Lurie C, factors through this new version of C in which your categories are enriched over necklical sets instead of uh, simplicial sets. Okay, so I just factor it through this because it will be easier to handle for my purposes. I factor C through this new construction. Okay, okay so there's a lot of symbols here 
but that's why I drew pictures here. So if you don't follow these symbols, you can look at those pictures, okay? I get dizzy with all these wedges. So the point of this proposition is to show why neck, the nature, the cubical nature of necklaces. What's the relationship between necklaces and cubes? Well, the point is that you, the faces of a necklace behave in the same way as the faces of a cube. Okay? So what does that mean? Okay? So I suggest not looking at this. Let's look at this picture here. So what's a face of a necklace? So first, the dimension of a necklace is the sum of the dimension of its beads minus the number of beads. Okay? So by a face, or I should really say a co-face, of a necklace T, I mean an injective map from another necklace T prime of dimension one less than T, right? What's the face of a cube? It's an injection from a lower dimensional cube, a co-dimension one thing into the cube, okay? So the, let me show why the faces of necklaces behave cubically. So we have two kinds of of faces or of cofaces, just as in the cubical case, right? You can either plug zero or plug one, right? So we have two flavors of cofaces and necklaces. The first one are morphisms of this form, in which you include a face into of a, of a single simplex into uh, that bead, right? And it's the identity every, everywhere else. Okay, so this is an inclusion map in which includes this triangle as a face, as this particular face of this bead. It, can also, it could also be the back face as well. That's another example. So this is one flavor of these co-faces. What's the other flavor? Well, you send two beads to one bead, right? As in this case. The shaded beads here go to the two shaded faces of this simplex. So that's the other flavor of these cofaces, okay? And you can count, and for a necklace of dimension n, if t is of dimension n, you will have um, two times n minus one cofaces, okay? So this is related to the fact that to any necklace T of dimension n, I can associate functorially a cube of dimension n minus 1, right? And the faces of the necklace T correspond to the cubical faces of um, your cube. That's what I mean by functorially, okay? Good. So. Um, ah, let me say something that you can see, the starting to see the relationship to the Kolbar construction, is that these faces correspond to the boundary in uh, the, the ordinary boundary of a simplex, right? And these faces correspond to Alexander Whitney terms, right? These two faces correspond to one Alexander Whitney term applied to the top cell of this bead, right? So you can see that the differential or the faces of this necklical set will be described in terms of Alexander Whitney and uh, boundary faces of your uh, underlying simplicial set. So uh, one more thing, so there's a there's a normalized chains function that takes a necklical set and outputs a chain complex using this idea. The boundary, func the boundary map will be given by alternating some of these cofaces as usual. And the statement is that, remember I constructed this necklical version of Lurie's rigidification function. If I take the chains here, on this necklical set between a point and itself, if I take the chains, 
I get something which is exactly the Kovar construction on the simplicial chains. This should be an this should be an S, and that should also be an S. I'm sorry. Um, the neclic the chains on the neclical model of S is exactly it's isomorphic, not quasi-isomorphic. It's exactly the Kovar construction on the simplicial chains of S. Okay. In the case when I have to assume that um, your simplicial set has a single vertex, okay? But up to homotopy, every connected simplicial set can be reduced to this case. So what's the punchline of this? So remember, we had this weak equivalence of DGAs given by a result of Lurie, which related this C to the base loop space, right? And then I took chains on both sides, and I got a weak equivalence of differential graded algebras that was implied by Lurie's theory, and I factored this C into a triangulation functor and an eclical version. And moreover, I had this isomorphism, which I explained before. And um, using all these three facts, I get what I wanted to show, that for any connected space X, there is a weak equivalence of differential graded algebras from the Kolbar construction of the singular chains functor and the singular chains on the base loop space, okay? However, it looks like I'm moving things around. There's some content here, which is the proof that um, the, the Lurie's statement that relates C to the path space or C to the base loop space, right? That's where all the content is going, right? And then, some uh, categorical and combinatorial manipulation gives you this result, okay? So this was uh, work with Mahmoud Seinalian, but we wanted to make a statement which did not rely on Lurie's theorem, on Lurie's theory, right, of higher categories, because this should be able, we should be able to prove this with, um, just with classical algebraic topology tools. And that was the, that's the content of a, a next article with Saneblitze from Tbilisi. And the statement that we prove is the following. So this statement only uses classical algebraic topology. Okay? The proof of it. So that's what I just said. So to any connected simplicial set S, we associate functorially a commutative diagram of the following form. So this omega hat s and omega p of s are neclical sets. The hat here means that this process involves some either um, can replacement or group completion kind of procedure in order to get the right homotopy type. Of, okay, that's what the hat means. Because I'm starting with the general simplicial set s and not singular chains on the space. This is a statement for a general simplicial set S. Okay? So I, the hat means that you invert one simplices, you obtain neclical sets, these pre-sheaves on the category of necklaces, associated to each neclical set, there's a geometric realization obtained by gluing the cubes corresponding to each necklace. And the statement is that we associate a diagram like this. On the right-hand side, you have the path vibration, which has as fiber the base loop space on the geometric realization of your simplicial set. And omega, we, pr we prove that P, the, we construct a map P, which is um, a homotopy equivalence, and we prove that omega there's a map omega, which is also a homotopy equivalence, and moreover, it respects the monoidal structure, because omega of S is not only a neclical set, but it has a monoidal structure, okay? And how do we prove that omega is a homotopy equivalence? We use a classical tool from algebraic topology, and is that we showed that this sequence of maps of spaces is a quasi-fibration, 
Okay? No, you don't have to show it's a fibration. You show only it's a quasi-fibration, meaning that the fibers are homotopy equivalent to the homotopy fibers. We use this criteria, the classical criterion of Dold and Tom to show that, which you can show it locally and paste them together. And then quasi-fibration have long exact sequence of homotopy groups. So we showed that this object, the space, has the homotopy type of the base loop space. But the chains on this object are correspond to Adam's cobar construction, or a generalization of Adam's cobar because I have extended by adding inverses here. So this is a cubical cell complex now. So we obtain a combinatorial model for the path vibration in which the cells are cubical, and moreover, the cubical chains here correspond to, the, to a generalization of the Cobar construction. Okay? So this is a self-contained paper also in the archive, and it's, there's no higher categories, no infinity categories. But in the other paper with Zainalian, we place it in this context of uh, higher categories of Lewis. Okay? Great. So some consequences of um, these statements. So first of all, um, Lurie gives a model structure in simplicial sets in which the fiber and objects are quasi-categories, okay? Our models for infinity categories. The uh, weak equivalences in that simplicial set, uh, sorry, in that model category are essentially maps of simplicial sets which induce, model, uh, which induce maps of simplicial categories after the application of this rigidification function, okay? And we kind, kind of mimic this in the algebraic side, right? We say, let's make a new, new definition of a weak equivalence of co-algebras to be a, a weak equivalence if it's an omega quasi-isomorphism, meaning if it's a quasi-isomorphism after applying the Cobar function. And with this new defin definition, uh, we have a map, which is a functor, which is the chains functor, that sends first weak equivalences of simplicial sets, con weak equivalences to quasi isomorphisms of coalgebras. That's classical, right? If you have a con weak equivalence, it goes to a quasi-isomorphism of Alexander Whitney coalgebras, but moreover, the categorical equivalents on this side go to this new uh, omega quasi-isomorphisms. Okay, so behind this, there's a quilling function relating two different model categories. Okay, and this is this statement is a beginning to what I said before that we are interested in understanding the algebraic nature of spaces relating the model category of spaces to a model category of algebraic objects. So I expect that if you enrich this side with like some e infinity, e infinity data, then you might get something closer to an equivalence here. Okay? Another application is, so Lurie shows that C sends weak equivalences between con complexes to weak equivalents of simplicial categories. The fa this fact is not true if I take arbitrary simplicial sets here. And this gives us also a statement I mentioned at the beginning that if I use any con complex model for a space and I take the cobar on the simplicial chains of this con complex model, then I get the right homotopy type of the base loop space. The right homological type, I should say, right? So if you want to obtain a model for the base loop space, make sure you use chains coming from a con-complex model of your underlying space. Another application is the following, which is very nice, I think, and we obtain it very naturally. So we had this functor K, which takes a simplicial set, and outputs a category in rich over necklical sets. So it's, this functor was factoring Lurie's functor C through this new category of categories in rich over necklical sets. And then given a category um, 
in which the home spaces are these necklical sets, I can take chains homewise to obtain a DG category, right? So you have these necklical sets on the home spaces. You take chains on each hum. Now the hums are chain complexes. So you obtain a DG category. So this composition of functors, it turns out to be a strict left adjoint to the DG nerve functor of Lurie, which goes the other way. So you can use actually you, this functor to define the DG nerve. And it's much more natural to use the simplicial than to use the simplicial version of Lurie, because then the adjunction is not satisfied strictly. Okay, so that's a nice application. And moreover, using this, we can show um, that certain definitions of, a, of infinity local systems are equivalent. So what's an, equi what's an infinity local system? Sometimes defined as a function from infinity categories from a space to chain complexes, or it's also sometimes defined as a DG module over chains on the base loop space. But since chains on the base loop space is now equivalent to COBAR, we can use COBAR. And using this fact, we can show the equivalence of these two definitions in a one-line proof. And moreover, this, and this is a point I want to stress, is that this definition of um, local systems is very nice because this is a purely algebraic construction, right? And now you can use, uh, you can bring in tools from algebraic, from homotopy of algebraic structures such as Kosul duality to study local systems. For example, there's a statement related to Kosul duality that says that modules over cobar of a co-algebra, that category, that triangulated category, is equivalent to co-modules over the underlying co-algebra. Okay? So this kind of Kosul duality can be used now to study uh, infinity local systems. Like these statements open up this possibility. A final statement is that we obtain a model for the free loop space. So what's the free loop space is the space of loops but the base point is not, now, is not fixed now, right? And Goodwilly constructed a quasi-isomorphism from chains on the free loop space to Hochschild chains on the algebra of chains on the base loop space. Okay, but now I can replace these guys here by the Cobar construction because I showed it's equivalent even in the connected case. And there's this algebraic uh, statement by Catherine Hess that says that Hochschild chains on the cobar of a coalgebra is quasi-isomorphism, quasi, it's a chain complex quasi-isomorphic to this co-Hochschild construction on the coalgebra C. Okay? And from this fact, I can use now C to be singular chains on your space, that coalgebra with Alexander Whitney co-product. And I combining these two facts, the fact that I have a cobar model for the base loop space, even in the connected, non-simply connected case, I obtain the following corollary: that the chains on the free loop space, even when X is connected and non-simply connected, can be modeled by the Cohochschild chains on the Alexander Whitney coalgebra of X. So this means that uh, this um, purely algebraic construction of Cohochschild when applied to that coalgebra of singular chains gives you the, uh, base, the free loop space and this model is smaller than this huge thing of Goodwilly here, right? So for example, an application would be let's start to recover string topology using this smaller model. So Eric Malm tried uh, recovering string topology using this model, and th he had some difficulties, but I think this is more natural now to re recover intersection type operations here. So that's it. Thank you for your... Any questions? So for this last step, uh, mm -hmm. you'll be using a version of Kosul duality. Yeah, that's a Kosul duality. Yeah.
This is causal duality here, which is cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, see you next year. Thank you. I think the preliminary location is Campeche, but we'll see. Uh, will you get all